Okay, I'm deciding what I'm going to do today, uh, working on it. I was pointing out that the lacrimal areas are set in too deep. They need to come out slightly. They're slightly, they're, they're not, your eyes are not straight on. They're slightly offset. I'm trying to explain that. I'm sorry I didn't turn on my microphone, so I'm just sort of reiterating what I said earlier in the video. I'm showing how, I'm trying to show how the eyes are offset. They're, they're, they're not straight on, they're slightly offset like that, just slightly. If you want to think of the extreme, think of uh, like a deer with the head side, with the eyes on the sides. Ours are set forward, but not completely straight forward. And that's what really makes them come alive. Now, if you, if you do it like I have there, um, they're going to seem like they're slightly inset. Come with the parents coming off cross-eyed. Now I'm examining two, two, two square of shape. And the best way to critique a work, to, to help people critique a work, is critique your own work and then show the flaws in the, the way you, your own work is. These back lines are too parallel, too much texture going on. I created a lot of that. They see the parallel lines. You want to strip it. Now that's a Baroque line. It goes from the lower left to the upper right. Baroque line. And the sinister line goes from the lower right to the upper left. So I'm just giving instructions on what I'm going to uh, modify as the day progresses. I didn't like the way the collar, the, the shape between the collar and the chin appeared. So the best way to demonstrate is find out the weaknesses in your own work and show how to improve them. That's what I'll do today. I got a new video camera and have a microphone on it so I'd have better sound and I forgot to turn the microphone on. So I'm going to try to remember what I said. Starting out, <clears throat> looking at the piece, I, I need to uh, decide what I'm going to do uh, for the day. And I saw that within the eyes, that the eyes are protruding inward slightly actually they're, they're, they're straight across and they need to protrude slightly uh, at an angle so I didn't get that angle so I'm, I, I explained the angle and I'm going in there and correcting the angle uh, of the eyes That's by building up the bony, the the uh, <clears throat> bony area under the eye, and pushing that out a little bit, I'll get a better angle on the eyes. It makes the eyes look somewhat cross-eyed. Adding a little bit of eyelid over the cornea. Again, as I've said before in the past, the bulges over the cornea. And if you get the eyelid to wrap around the eye eyeball, and then where the change of direction occurs is when the, the uh, fossa attached to the lids goes to the bone. That's where you get the change of direction. You can see a little better from the left side what I'm doing. You know, see my big hand. See, so we're cha we're changing the direction. The lid goes from wrapping around, wraps all the way around into the eye socket, and then that little tissue uh, called the lacrimal fossa uh, is what gives you the al almond shaped. And I'm bringing that 
out further because the eyes aren't straight into the head they're slightly offset I think is the point I'm trying to make I removed the beard I wasn't happy with the beard so I'm removing the beard Again, working with big, simple shapes. And I, I emphasized that it's good to stand up at this point. Uh, I was sitting in the previous videos for the demonstrations, but when you really want to see what the defects are and effects, then it's good to stand up, work at arm's length, and move back and forth. So it's a very proactive um, type of work at this point. So now I need to beef up the neck again. The best way to critique an artwork is to critique your own artwork and find the flaws and demonstrate the flaws and make them better so people can see. <clears throat> so I kind of messed up the microphone. I wish I could re recount how I exact. Okay, I'm talking about it's good to blur your eyes, stand back and blur your eyes and see like a painter does and see the simple shapes now there's some shapes I'm describing there that I'm not real comfortable with it's too square on the end I need to have some variation So I'm going to deal with fixing that. Two parallel lines in the back. So we're going to give it a little variation. But simple. Keep it simple. Simple is always beautiful and elegant. You know, there's just too much noise in the back and there's not going to be that many people looking at the back anyway, so we want to make it simple. Look at the elegant shapes. <clears throat> Now I'm getting some movement to the hair, and I'm concerned with the way the collar, the angle of the collar with the neck. I'll remember to turn on my microphone tomorrow. just going for better shapes. I'm standing up and, and walking back at this. Yeah, No parallel lines. Parallel lines kill it. Pulling the hair away from the air. I've been simplifying the back and the front. Standing back looking at it. I got a nice chin going. I'm pretty happy with that. Now I've been <clears throat> really motoring at it since early this morning, so I'm 
there's only so much focus you can do so to keep myself working I'm going to go ahead and sit down and lower the sculpture and work on the crown I got fatigued for a while so I lowered the model and played with the crown just tried to get a little playful what would the Fisher King's crown look like I think it would have clues as to the grail now I'm working on the mask area just kinda cleaning it up for me the symmetry of the face begins with the eyes and the inside of the eye sockets here I'm playing a little bit with the texture around the eyes I work with the mask and then expand. The mask is the area of the nose and the eyes. Now you can find the symmetries. <coughs> this is real crucial when you come in the second go around. You can find out which one's recessed, which one's flatter, which side's flatter, which one's more recessed, and try to equilibrate them at this stage. I use that line underneath the eye between the bone and the fatty uh, process to as a gauge to pull off the the uh, shapes that's one of the main gauges there the areas around the nose we begin the mouth mouth area begins at the bottom of the nose and everybody's mouth and nose are different that's what makes us unique you can say that there's certain similarities everybody has but they're as different as fingerprint now I'm, I'm getting the fingernail marks out and smoothing up the lumps with the brush again I'm focusing on cleaning up the, the, the lines and getting them crisp The clay has dried to a nice leathery quality so it's very easy to get nice crisp edges. Again a combination of wire tools and fine brushes. I'm using a scotch bright pad to get some of the big lumps out. Because under the chin is a little rougher, I'm taking plastic window screen and just using it instead of my thumb, it gives my thumb a little extra um, coarseness but still retains the sensitivity of the thumb because it, it's so thin I'll sit here and work back on the getting the chin smooth Just going in and focusing on making nice shapes everywhere. Now it's starting to appear to be nice. I'm 
starting to get a little fatigued. But look at the nice shapes that we've achieved today. That's the trip. Organic <coughs> shapes. Yeah, I'm getting tired. I'm going to call it a day soon. I can tell that. It's coming up. Notice like the eyebrows are still a solid mass. Carve as though you're, model as though you're going to carve it. That way you're not going to have these super thin little areas that are difficult to cast if you're going to cast. You should always work as though you're going to carve it. Now I'm putting the bag over it. I'm le leaving it loosely because I live in Florida and the clay stays moist for a long time and its own moisture will wick out and uh, keep it quite moist. <laughs> 